This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Gildart and welcome back to another Pros vs Cons review. I would say that I have spent a decent amount of time with every Dynasty Warriors Gundam game working on these reviews. However, before I started working on the reviews, Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 was probably the one that I spent the least amount of time with. When I loaded up most of my save files, I had spent anywhere from 80 to over 100 hours with each Gundam game. That being said, Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 only had about 60 hours put into it. There were lots of achievements left to unlock and still characters and mobile suits for me to work toward. So I not only saw this as an opportunity to dive back in and re-familiarize myself with this entry, but also to work towards that coveted 100%. Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 originally launched on the PS2, PS3, and 360 in Japan on December 18th, 2008 while the Western release would hit all of the same platforms in April of the following year. When I learned about Gundam Muso Special on PS2 releasing after the first Dynasty Warriors Gundam with additional content, much like Dynasty Warriors 6, I was surprised to see Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 also receive a PS2 release at the same time as the HD ports. Starting things out, I'd say that Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 serves as a similar sequel to Dynasty Warriors 3. Though the first game is a great foundation for the series, it did leave a lot to be discussed desired after you get the main gameplay loop out of the way. Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 provides updates to the overall gameplay mechanics, visuals, roster, and so much more. The thing is, this is also when Koei was trying to experiment more with their formula. Between 2007 and 2009, we would receive Dynasty Warriors DS, Dynasty Warriors 6, The First Strike Force, and Samurai Warriors 3, all of which have varying opinions among the fans. So some of the changes made with Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 fit into this experimental stage as well. I'm gonna be honest here, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how my opinion of this game turns out considering it's been so long since I last played it. But before we go too far, don't forget to give this video a like, comment with your thoughts below, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, no more delays, it's time to find out if the upgrades that we got from the first game are worthwhile with the first pro. Alright folks, overall this game looks a whole lot better. I know it's still not outputting at the same level as a PS4 or Xbox One could provide, but when you see these visuals, you'll know right away that it's an upgrade from the first game. The first Dynasty Warriors Gundam didn't look bad by any means, but the colors were more dull fitting well into the 7th generation. At times, it even looked blurry due to the way that the 720p graphics get upscaled. Depending on what was happening on screen, the PS3 version looked better while sometimes the 360 one did. With Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2, both consoles seem to be relatively on par, with the only plus being that the PS3 version receives 60 frames per second on cutscenes while the 360 is locked at 30 for everything. Even on PS2, this game looks really good when you consider the hardware. One of the biggest things that I like like is just how shiny the mobile suits are. I feel like you're taking a brand new model out onto the battlefield every time. When I first put this game in, I was taken aback by just how much it makes the mobile suits pop. One thing I do like is that some of the stages from the first game have been carried over to the sequel and that helps to show the difference in the graphics. When you're running through the forests outside of Jaburo, it's more lush and colorful. Even the more dull environments like the desert or space look more vibrant in this engine. On top of the in-game moments looking beautiful, the cutscenes in this game are taken that much farther with this visual style. It's awesome to see the iconic moments from Mobile Suit Gundam, Zeta, Double Zeta, and Char's counterattack while getting original cutscenes from Mission Mode. There's even extra bits of detail, like when Dozzle exits the Big Zam and starts firing at the Gundam himself. There is an actual model for a character in a spacesuit. They could have gone the lazy route and just not have this cutscene in, but they went that extra mile. It's a similar situation when Kara gets captured by Gune. There's a model for that pilot. Also, you gotta love the original cutscenes from Mission Mode. Seeing mobile suits from various series interacting with each other is really just cool in my opinion. The main point of this pro is that Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 looks pretty as fuck. Con! This was mentioned in the review of the first game, but this issue persists with the sequel. That issue being the official story mode. Like I said in the last 
point, we get to see story moments from the original Mobile Suit Gundam, Zeta, Double Zeta, and Char's counterattack, meaning we only get one additional series in this game's story. As great as it is to see Char's counterattack recreated in this game's engine, it is disappointing that we don't see any more stories included here. Meanwhile, we still have characters in suits from Wing, Turn A, G Gundam, F91, Victory, and C Destiny. The good news is that we get to see a lot more scenes and battles from these four series that appear thanks to the addition of new suits and characters from the first game. It's not like you'll have any less content playing through official mode, but the unfortunate fact is that you'll probably be spending the same amount of time with it. Shirako and Haman have been removed from official mode, meaning you only play through Amuro's, Char's, Camille's, and Judo's story. This is unfortunate because in the first game, though we play the same stages for some characters, we did get to see some different perspectives and the stage either played out a little different or we got character specific dialogue and cutscenes. I also honestly think that it would have been awesome to play through the Jaburo stage as Char Zagak and Aboaku as the Xiang. Then when you think about the other characters that have now become playable in mission mode that could have had a couple of stages in official mode from their perspective, there is a lot of missed opportunity. Kai, Hayato, Slager, Makuve, Rambarel, and Dazzle are all playable from the original Mobile Suit Gundam. Shirako and Haman were removed from the Zeta storyline, but we also get to play as Emma, Jared, Yazan, Rakoa, Sarah, Four, and Rosamia. Even though the first game you could only play as Emma and Jared in the original mode, it would have been cool to see them upgraded for Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2. Then with Double Zeta, you have Ru, Puru, Puru 2, and Glemmy. Only the latter was added as playable for this game, but again, would have been cool to see these characters get some story stages. The only characters other than Amuro and Char that are playable for Char's counterattack are Quest and Gune. It still would have been nice to be able to see all of these perspectives of the battles that take place. Maybe even some what if scenarios like if the Xiang won against the Gundam or if Gune was able to take out the new Gundam and win over quests. There are some what if like missions in mission mode, but they aren't quite the same as I envision. Instead of being a what if based on an already established battle, we get to see something like Miliardo joining Char in trying to drop Axis on Earth, while Hiro, Amuro, Domon, and Gingham team up to stop them. I'm not saying those moments aren't appreciated, they are cool, but I would slot that in as a hypothetical scenario, while what I want is some what ifs, just some slight alterations on battles we would have already experienced. These hypothetical moments happen by playing through each character's story within mission mode. This is Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2's version of original mode. Not only do you get to play through a character's specific story, but this is where a bunch of the post story content is. This can be anything from a battle of just Sakus to your license missions that you'll need to play with each character so that they can pilot certain mobile suits. You're going to be spending a whole lot of time in this mode, so it's also very disappointing that the story missions aren't nearly as cool as the first game. Like I said, you get some hypothetical moments where characters from various series band together against a common enemy, but the issue with this is that there's no overarching story. In the first game, there are different teams that band together to fight against Musha Gundam and other teams for a common goal. Hiro, Master Asia, and Jared is a cool combo, but my favorite was Miliardo, Domon, and Puru. No matter who you played as, these teams and the general storyline were the same. This helps to connect all the stories while giving you a different experience with each team. It just would have been nice to have an overarching original story for mission mode. Pro. Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 didn't just change things with its mode structure and visuals. It also changed a lot about the combat that just improves on every aspect of what we got in the first game. One of my biggest complaints about combat in the first entry was how when you level up and gained a longer combo, it was just the original four hit combo repeated. With Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2, we get the combo upgrade we needed originally. Now as you level up, you can reach a six hit combo with certain mobile suits. There have also been some charge attack changes like Wing Zero C3. Overall, this alone is a great improvement, but Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 doesn't stop there. Dash attacks can not only be chained one after another as long as you have thruster left, but you can end these with a charge attack rather than your normal shot attack from the first game. On top of that, musos have been adjusted. In the first game, as you level up, you earn three total muso bars. With each muso bar, your attack would have up to three phases. Now, you can still get up to three muso bars, but instead of having phases, that first phase is just extended. You also get aerial musos that is different from your ground muso, and for some of the mobile suits that appeared in the first game, they took the animation from one of the other phases 
for this. As well, combination musos have a different animation too. Dashing has been made so much better as well. Instead of only being able to dash for a short burst of time, you can now hold down X or A and you'll just keep going until you run out of thruster. If you're piloting a transformable mobile suit, you don't need to jump then boost in order to transform. Instead, you just need to double tap X or A. This usually makes your thruster gauge deplete slower, so if you can transform, it's good to get around larger maps. Then there's something that I think is the best aspect of the Dynasty Warriors Gundam series. Only the first game didn't have this feature, but every entry since this one has it. Also, no other Warriors game has done this either. Now, some of you are questioning what I'm building up to, but those of you that have played these games will know that I am talking about every mobile suit that appears in this game is playable. That means even the foot soldier units like Zaku's and Jim's. The closest we've come to this is Nene's special attack in Samurai Warriors 2. The big difference is that with Nene's ability, you can only become a random foot soldier unit that's nearby. If you get hit, you turn back to Nene. With Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2, you are playing as that unit from the start of the stage until the end. I guess the other closest would be Outlaw and Ken's Rage, but I wouldn't really consider that because he has a fully fleshed out moveset. There are three separate types of mobile suit units. The first are the ones piloted by the main characters that require a license to pilot. These have the full six hit combo I was talking about before. These would be suits like Wing Zero, F-91, Strike Freedom, etc. The next stage would be similar to the unique NPCs of Samurai Warriors 5, but instead of having a full six hit combo that's a clone of someone else, they have their own unique four hit combo that might be cloned among similar looking mobile suits. These would include the Jack Daga and the Palace Athene. They would be the mobile suits that appear throughout the story, but aren't the important characters per se. Not only are they limited to a four hit combo, but their Muso attacks aren't affected by the combination Musos or how many bars you have. They only consume one Muso bar and aren't usually as devastating as the main mobile suits. Their dash attacks are also only one singular attack, rather than a combo that you can finish with a charge attack. The final unit type are the foot soldier units. These are the ones that you'll see everywhere. The green Zaku's, Jim's, the frickin' ball. The big difference between these units is that they don't have a charge attack at all. Instead, they have a long string of normal attacks. Similar to the four hit combo units, grunt suits only have a single dash attack and their musos only consume one bar and are less effective. This exponentially increases the mobile suit roster from 18 to 66. Just making the suits from the first game playable would have been a big change, but they even went ahead and added more on top of that. There are even challenges around using foot soldier units. This, on top of mission mode, will keep you coming back to this game over and over again. Con! And even though we had an explosion in the mobile suit roster, there are some odd choices made with what we have. First off, something that I mentioned in the first review is that the Rick DS that are piloted by other people are all red. In the anime, only Quattro's is red red until he gets the Hyakushiki. Then Apali and Fa get to pilot the red model. We still don't have the gray one and I don't understand why they wouldn't just put a color variant in here already. I also made a complaint about turn A being included in the first game with no rival or partner from their series, but we now have Gingham and the turn X. The thing that sucks about this is that the turn X is only a four hit combo suit. It feels so weird to have a rival for a character who has a six hit combo and the other only has a four hit. On top of that, Char Zagok and the Zhang only have a four hit combo as well. You would think that Char being such an important character would receive all six hit combo mobile suits, especially the Zhang. I can kind of understand the Zagok because it only appears in one stage, but the Zhang is essentially the final boss of the mobile suit Gundam storyline. Back to the topic of variants, there is only one model for the ball with a singular cannon on top. Meanwhile, there are two versions of the ball, one with a single cannon and one with two. This could have been implemented like a a costume option. Suits like the Cubile, Gundam Mark II, Rick Diaz, and of course the balls could have all had variant options. Remember folks, it's perfectly normal for your balls to be a little different. The moveset could also still change if they choose to do that. Another variant option could have been the Dom and Rick Dom. There's not really a whole lot of difference, it's mostly in the backpack and the bazooka, but I think it would have been nice to see the Black Tristars piloting the Doms when the Rick Doms appear as foot soldier units. Again, it's not like they have to have different movesets just add it as a costume option. I also have to mention Rambaral, who is one of my favorite characters. Even though he serves Zeon, he 
he has his own ideals and is probably one of the most down-to-earth enemies in the original Mobile Suit Gundam. He has even more development in Gundam The Origin, Advent of the Red Comet. He represents a massive opposition to Amuro and the Earth Federation forces. So why is his mobile suit considered a grunt suit? I'm not saying make it a full six-hit combo, but at least a four-hit one. You could still use this goof move set for a mass production style. In the first Dynasty Warriors Gundam, there were these deep blue and a more faded blue goof. If you took the faded model and removed the commander's horn, you could have a foot soldier goof unit and still keep Ramba Ral as being a big enemy for the Mobile Suit Gundam storyline. Both he and Makuve get the short end of the stick because even the Gyan is a foot soldier style. Meanwhile, both Ramba Ral and Makuve are playable pilots in mission mode. Also on the list of weird choices as well, some mobile suits can only be used on the surface while others can only be used in space. The ball and Zhang can only be used in space. Space. But this also doesn't make sense because they could just be floating during surface stages. The land only suits are the Zaku tank, which I'll admit does make a little bit of sense, though it still has flight animations, as well as both Shars and the regular Zagok, and both variants of the Goof. All of these land mobile suits have flight animations, but on top of that, one of the Goof variants is the Goof flight type. Like, it's literally called flight type. How can it not be allowed in space? I think these are designated as only space and only land because they only ever appear in the anime as such. Now we get to talk about all the mobile suits that aren't playable or just aren't in the game at all. First off, there is an additional mobile suit type that I didn't talk about in the last pro, and those are mobile armors. These are giant mobile suits that when you're facing off against them, you need to take out their limbs and weapons to weaken them. They are quite powerful and can be a difficult fight depending on what you're piloting. There are six mobile armors, all of which are not playable. This is a big disappointment because I think it would have been a lot of fun to play as one of the Psycho Gundams going on an absolute rampage. Maybe even limiting the player to mobile armor stages so that you don't go wiping out an entire enemy army on a harder stage with ease. As well, the gun tank from the first Mobile Suit Gundam is still missing even though the Zaku tank is here. Luna Maria Hawk is playable, but her Zaku gunner is not nowhere to be seen. Gato, as well as his blue Gelgoog, also appeared in the first game as a non-playable unit, but his character and Gelgoog are completely removed. I don't know why, but they chose to keep Johnny and his Gelgoog in here. I also mentioned in the first review a bunch of other mobile suits that didn't appear from Zeta Gundam that I thought would have been beneficial to add here. So go and check that out if you want to hear me complain more about how we're missing suits from this game. I can't believe it, I still had this much to talk about on a topic of missing suits for the sequel. Pro. Now, as much as I had to complain about Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 has a lot of little things that just help bring the overall game up in quality. First off, even though I complained about the lack of connection in the mission mode story and the lack of characters in original mode, we still get to see more of the story in general. I can't really speak for the double Zeta line, but for the original Mobile Suit Gundam and Zeta, we have a whole lot more here. This is thanks to the addition of a lot of specific characters and mobile suits that just didn't appear in the first game. Having mobile armors also allows for the big Zam and Psycho Gundams to appear. Makuve also finally gets his Gyan. It's just such a better story experience, even if there's less characters to play through. Speaking of having more, Mission Mode may not have a connected story, but it has so much more to play through. This includes each character's stories, as well as faction stories like the Ayug and Zeon, where you can join these factions and fight along alongside them for a two to four stage long story. There are also challenges, like I said before, where you may need to fight as a grunt suit against more powerful enemies. This is also where you unlock the licenses to pilot the various mobile suits. Most license missions involve you increasing your friendship with a character by playing a stage with them as an ally. If you go into a stage where they are an enemy, it will also affect your friendship with them. Mission Mode is an incredible improvement on what we got with Original Mode. This game just has so much more replayability. One of my complaints with the first game was around the inverted camera control. In Dynasty Warriors Gundam, you did have the option to change camera inversion, but it only affected the vertical controls. With Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2, you can actually change both. This was a big pain point for the first Dynasty Warriors Gundam, as well as the first Warriors Orochi, both being the 
the only Warriors games with camera controls where you can't change the horizontal option. There's also little bits of extra detail that I noticed as a longtime player of these games. Like I said before, having pilot models in cutscenes was a neat detail, but it goes even deeper. Lots of the conversations that happen in cutscenes and in the middle of battle are taken straight from the script of the anime, but some lines are even re-recorded by the original actors. Then there's something that I only noticed thanks to my time with Gundam Muso Special. You see, in that game, both Musha and Musha Mark II receive their own stories. When you go to unlock the license for these suits, Musha Gundam's mission is in the volcano, which is the first stage of this storyline, and Musha Mark II is in Jaburo, which is at the end. I think this was a neat little detail that they put in. It's just too bad that the West wouldn't really understand it because we didn't get Gundam Muso Special. Come on! And now it's time for me to take the negative spin of the last pro, which is all of the things that I didn't like about Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2. First off, I was able to get my hands on a Japanese copy, and I am still sad to confirm that the music from the anime has still been removed. Not overly surprising, which is why I'm not going to say too much beyond that. But I am also interested to see if Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3 has some Japanese exclusive songs as well. DLC also leaves a lot to be desired, but I won't really complain too much considering they're all free. It's just some extra extra missions. If this were a modern game, these would either be charged for or just included as a free update. I would have liked to see some new suits, especially the missing ones that I mentioned before. I will say that though I mentioned the looks of this game as a pro, there is something that I don't like about the changes to this game, and that's the interface. The thing is, with the first game, they almost made it feel like a cockpit. When character portraits would come up, most of the pilots were in their spacesuits, while now they're in their most iconic outfit. Maybe this is a bit of fan service, but I liked it when they're suit was more practical. Then there's the fact that it looked like they were coming up on the intercom, almost like a video message. This just helped with the immersion, and I didn't really notice this small detail until it was gone. Lastly, I need to mention something about the combat that I didn't like. One of the additions to the gameplay mechanics is the ability to control the morale bar ever so slightly. The actions you take in combat will affect whether your army does well or poorly. The issue is how it's communicated to the player. When you're doing well, it says that the action is picking up. When you do poorly, it says that the pilots are disappointed in the lack of action. This would make you think that you need to zoom around taking out bases or killing officers in quick succession. Though that can work in your favor, what the pilots are actually looking for is for you to complete the tasks that come up, like taking out specific officers or bases. If you don't do it right away, your allies will be disappointed and morale will decrease. I don't really like this because it's similar to the missions in Arslan, where you must complete them within a certain time frame. Whereas with something like Samurai Warriors, you may have a time limit, but it's whether that mission is a success or a failure. Sometimes it will affect morale, but sometimes it won't. At least it's not exactly like Arslan, and failing the mission within a time limit will also actually cause the whole battle to be lost. That would be even more disappointing. In the end, Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 proved to be the sequel we needed. Much like the upgrade we got from Dynasty Warriors 2 to 3, the second Gundam game is an improvement on everything. I said at the beginning of the review that I hadn't played a whole lot of this entry, which is surprising to me going back to it. I was missing so many achievements and I am ready to work towards those that I haven't gotten yet. After playing the first Dynasty Warriors Gundam, I felt like I needed more from it. I keep making this comparison, but it was almost exactly like my feelings towards Dynasty Warriors 2. After unlocking everything, I have absolutely no want to go back to it. That being said, with all of the improvements that Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 makes, I can definitely see myself coming back to it even after popping all of the achievements for it. And that's why I'm giving Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2 an 8 out of 10. We now practically have the complete story of Mobile Suit Gundam, Zeta Gundam, and Char's Counterattack. I still have yet to watch Double Zeta, but I imagine we get to see more of that story as well. Even though the Mission Mode story lacks the same connectivity of the first game's original mode, Mission Mode does offer a whole lot of post-game content that you'll never get bored of. Not to mention the explosion in the character roster thanks to the addition of every other mobile suit in this game. Being able to play as grunt suits adds a level of variety that can still be hard to find in many other Warriors games. That being said, I feel there's still some important 
certain mobile suits that were missing, and even though they finally added mobile armors, we can't play as them at all. There have also been many gameplay changes, including the combos for the main playable mobile suits. In the first game, it didn't really feel like you were progressing through levels when you upgraded your combo because it just looped the basic four hits. Now we finally have the six hit combo we're used to from the classic Dynasty Warriors series. Aerial and combination musos now provide even more variety in combat. With the additional mobile suits as well, we now have three different gameplay types. Your main suits that have the full six hit combo, the more generic officers that have the four hit combo, and your grunt suits that just loop two normal attacks for an eight hit combo with no charge attack. Overall, I just can't get enough of Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2. Knowing I still have two more games to go through before I reach the end of this journey makes me excited to see what's to come. If this game had so many improvements, what does the next game have? And the game after that? What other Gundam series will be added, and what new mobile suits and stories will we get to experience? All I can say is as ready as I am to jump into the next game, I wouldn't mind spending just some more time with this entry beforehand. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching my review of Dynasty Warriors Gundam 2. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also, comment your thoughts below and let me know which entry is your favorite. If you'd like to help support the channel and what I do here, you can join the guild just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen right now. You can join them at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month over on Patreon. Or if you'd like to help support the channel in a one-off kind of thing, you can also join the volunteer unit over on Coffee. There are other rewards and other tiers as well, so check out the links that you see on screen, and I will see you all down in the comments.